pointing the finger in the wrong direction. A radical Islamist street preacher in Toronto is adamant that sexual assaults are a product of Western society. He says Canada gives women too much freedom and it's time, gals, that you cover up. He's also proposing a new law that would make it illegal for women to dress provocatively. So joining us now with her thoughts on this is Rahil Raza. She is an author, a woman's right activist, as well as member of the Muslim Canadian Congress. Does this offend you? I am absolutely outraged. I had to drink two liters of water to calm <laughs> me down this morning. I am so angry. You know, this ignorant imbecile should be taken off the streets. He has no right to make public statements like this. First of all, he has no business speaking about how women dress. It's none of his business. And if he must speak about women's dress, then he, if he has to open his mouth, he should talk about Muslim women in Tahrir Square who have been sexually assaulted. Right. Uh, first of all, you know, it, it's really important, this, this idea that somehow sexual assault and rape is a woman's fault. He needs to understand, he needs to educate himself mm -hmm. that it's not about women, it's about the men. It's about sexually depraved men, and it's about how they treat women. All women need to be respected. Dress, has, dress code has nothing to do with it. And if this man thinks that women who cover up are not sexually assaulted, he needs to really educate himself. Right. There are women assaulted in Pakistan on the streets, there are women assaulted in Afghanistan, in India, and we've read about the women being assaulted during the Arab Spring in, uh, in Cairo, in Syria. Well, there's a case before the Canadian courts right now of a Toronto woman who alleges that she was sexually yes. assaulted by her uncle and her uh, brother. Uh, this stems back to 2007. Of course, that case has been completely derailed by the fact that she won't testify without wearing her burqa which is now before the Supreme Court of Canada. So he's not right when he says that that sexual assault only happens to women who are He's uh, not right on any account. He's totally off the bat. I would say that if anyone needs to be covered up, this man's mouth needs to be covered up. He <laughs> needs to be covered up. But we do not do that in this country. Away. The freedoms well, that we give people in this country is that he can say this to whomever he wants, but I would think that it's quite irresponsible. I mean, this is nothing more than rhetoric. Do you think that this damages then um, relationships between the Muslim population? I mean, it damages us totally. This is a man who is blaming, blaming the victim. And this is a man, and this is a very serious, deeper issue here. Mm -hmm. We're we're talking about the intent and the psychology of Muslims who then want to blame from 9-11 right. all the way to now. It's blame the victim. It's the victim's fault. And if the victim happens to be non-Muslim, then of course, it's everyone's fault except the Muslim men themselves. This is misogyny, patriarchy, deeply embedded in the psyche of men like him who are reflecting their own depraved desires on women and saying that it's because of the way, the way they dress. And right now, we are also talking about a case at the Pakistani consulate where right. a Pakistani woman was sexually assaulted by a consul officer. So why doesn't he make statements about what's happening about Muslim women and in the Muslim world instead of making rash, ignorant statements about how uh, non-Muslim women should dress? You make a good point. He also uh, goes on to praise Constable Michael Sanguinetti. Uh, he was the Toronto police officer who a couple of years ago, while speaking at York University, uh, said a comment along the lines of, well, if women would just not dress like sluts, then it wouldn't happen. Uh, and that officer uh, has been, you know, had his name dragged through the mud uh, and gotten all sorts of trouble for making that comment. Do you think that this will get the attention that it should? It absolutely should. I remember the uproar when the police officer made that statement, and I was among the women who was extremely angry about it. Mm -hmm. And this issue of sexual assault is not about the, the, you know, the nationality or the ethnicity of the women or about how they dress. It's about us as human beings. And apparently, people like this man who's making this statement don't look upon women as human beings. For them, they're just chattels to be covered up or uncovered as he desires. He, how dare he make a statement? about how women should cover up or not. How dare he be allowed to say this? He's an utter idiot. He should be locked up for life. How much traction, though, do comments coming from a guy like this get within the Muslim community? Well, it depends. I mean, obviously, there are people who are offended, but, you know, they're too afraid or politically correct right. to speak out. But we should speak out en masse, all of us. And Muslim women should be th in the front line of speaking out against people like him because he gives Muslims and women a bad name. 
Mm -hmm. See, it's people like him who reflect on what is happening and it makes my job so much more difficult because, you know, we talk about human rights. We talk about human rights for everyone. We talk about women's rights, women's rights for everyone. Women need to be respected regardless of what they wear or who they are or where they come from. This is what we try and teach our sons. But can you imagine the kind of effect this kind of a statement will have on young men, on young Muslim men? And what he's saying insidiously is that because Western women dress a certain way, that they actually invite sexual assault and that is dangerous. I would call this man a very dangerous offender and I would hope that political correctness will not keep people back from lashing out at him and forcing him to cover up and go into hiding because he should be ashamed of the statement he's made. Well, you can find him on the corner of Young and Dundas in downtown Toronto. Look, he has the freedom to say whatever he wants, but Hopefully, uh, people but look for the facts have the, behind yes. the message. And you know? we should have the freedom to tell him where to go. Indeed. I think you just did. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate your thoughts on this topic today. Thank you. That is Raheel. She's an author and board member from the Muslim Canadian Congress. She joins us live in studio. Of course, we'll have a lot more coverage on this very issue throughout the day.